One of the most famous wrecks down here is, is the submarine wreck. It's what I built my career fishing down that area, whether I was right on top of it or just in shore of it. But it's always crowded. It's a great spot. And I say crowded, meaning there's going to be a dozen boats or half a dozen boats there on a good, pretty day. Simrad's Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Scott Walker and Captain Steve Roger. Winter is here. Scotty, it, it, it is 100% winter time right now. <laughs> 12 hours. Look, it's even getting colder. It's 73 now. <laughs> it was 74 when we started fueling up. All right. Bunch of birds diving right there. They got the a seagull in each one of their heads. I've been watching them since we came in. Seagulls. You want to look at this, or you want to go right to that spot we were yesterday? Uh, that spot yesterday was pretty, pretty good. Uh, Only one boat there. Well, then hang on. Here we go. I wanted to get you there. I know you like the catch the black fins, you love you know, to, to eat them, you love to fight them, you love everything about them airing out. Uh, it's just a really cool fish that we have. I wanted to get you down there, and um, we, I waited for a real rough day, because yeah. then we kind of have it to ourselves, and it makes it a little bit easier, because we a lot of times people don't realize you know, we have a camera boat, mm -hmm. we have a diver, we have a still guy, we have a drone, we have a big production deal, so it, 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 it's kind of intrusive. So, and it's my backyard, so I kind of like to try to stay away and, and, and stay out of the guys that are working. Yeah, you want to leave the They're trying to make a living. We're trying to make a TV show. There's a there's a there's a fine line on etiquette. And so I waited for the roughest day, and that's my plan from the beginning. When I told you you're gonna, you know, we we're coming down here to do this, and uh, we went ahead and, and and the number one thing is you gotta have bait. You, you know, those fish are trained up to eat that bait. They're they're there because the guys throwing bait. They're not. Um, I, I think they usually would move on, but those fish are almost there all winter for the fact that somebody's there throwing bait seven days a week. It's, it's your marathon hump. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it gets touched every day. Yeah. The, the bait, uh, the day before we caught it, right here close, right here at the marina. And uh, so we checked a couple spots and it didn't pan out. Um, there was some that we couldn't get to, a little shallow. Uh, but man, we just made a move down on the south side. And sure enough, we get down there and I'm always looking for birds just like you are and uh, I saw a bird dive, and I'm like, oh, we can get in there, no problem. And we slipped in. They're diving over there. No birds on them on the wall, but it's thick, boy. Beautiful school of bait, and, and not only that, it was a big school, and it was a nice tight school, so it was, it was big loads when you hit it. Mm -hmm. It was so clean. I it know. was no grass, because we had been battling grass and you know <laughs> this debris in the wells for so long and it's a pain in the butt cleaning up i love it when i get to hit that bait on that sand where it's you know it's just a nice clean there's nothing in the net but what you're after all right i'm going in the floor with d scott no water in there i just got to open that thing up finally you know got our two live wells blacked out you know that's your uh, go-to move is blacking them out and making sure the pumps are perfect, make sure the flow is perfect. You know, all those little things that people don't think about, but it's hard to move a thousand pilchards from two foot of water out to 200 feet of water when it's blowing, banging, and keep them alive. And uh, no, you gotta get you've all, got the all the grass the valves out. in your boat set up to let water in, let water out, overflow the tanks so they don't get beat up on the run. So we get there at the freshest baits possible to get these fish really jacked up because they, they get pounded every day. They've seen everything. They've seen 20 pound liter, 30 pound liter. They've seen hook. They've seen thousands of pilchards. But they want they want to chase these things. And if they're fresh and frisky, then you get the tunas. Ready? Yeah. One. We nailed this one time with gold. Simrad's Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Simrad. Go with confidence. Hawks K Resort, the only key you'll need. Shimano. Bubba Blade, the ultimate lifestyle. Yeti, built for the wild. 
and by PowerPro, CDEC, and Costa. All right, Scott. Come and grab it. We're ready. Pull that straight up. And there's 10 feet. Ready? Yep. One. They put a lot of pressure to it, okay? We nailed this one time with gold. Golden. What we did, and it, and it sucks for you, uh, you know, because you're, unfortunately, you're, when, we're, when we're out a lot of times, you're, you're on the bow and you're dealing with the anchor. And, um, there's a lot of chain there, bro. And, and, <laughs> and the reason being is I only want to throw it one time. Right. And that's everybody's biggest mistake. They go with five foot of chain. Mm -hmm. They go with 10 foot of chain. I think we got 35 feet of chain. Because my theory is <laughs> a lot of times I like as much chain as long as the boat is. And because <laughs> I want it, I want it to stick. You know, there's one thing that I don't want to do is get up early, get the bait, throw the net, get in the perfect spot, throw my anchor. Everything's perfect. Everything's set up. Fish are starting. Here comes to all the other boats or what have you, and fish are starting to bite. And now I slide, or I, you know what I mean. Yeah. I start dragging, and then the whole thing is over for me. And, and it's then, like you're starting from scratch again. You might not even be getting to your spot you want. Right again. Once a fourth and fifth boat set up just right. Yeah. There's no. You can't. You can't get the right move to get back in spot. Big blaster. Oh, black fins are up. Fish on. Yeah, yeah, baby, look at him go. That's a light chum, too. Mine's coming up to jump, baby. Jump. Come on. Oh, a shark. Little baby shark. Two baby sharks. There they go back there. Just got a dozen jars to fill for you, for you and Heather and the kids. Key West tuna fishing, bro. Yeah. Well, I better get some jars. It's about to happen. I just bought you 12, last time you told 12 me I could, jars. Hey, last time you told me I couldn't have no jars because you can't fly with them. You can't. That ain't going to work this time. <laughs> that was the truth. Oh, look at them big, big upwind, upwind breaking. Oh, in the wind cast. What are you doing over there? There's the first black fin of the day, my friend. Trying to catch me one on a popper. On a popper. There we go. Is that cooler ready? Yeah, I said we catch three and then we make it ready. Come up that port side. Coming up the port side. Fresh tuna. Keep the blood down. We'll get a little flurry going. Chill out, there. baby, chill out. We'll get a little flurry there, some water in there in a little bit. Right one there, I think. A little weed going through. They're gonna blow up here on this weed, I'll bet you. Watch the popper, baby. Get a little more active when that sargasm comes through. Oh! oh that, that's what you wanted. I think it's a bonita, but. <laughs> right when it touched that. Hand me that and I'll move that out of your way. I think it's, it's got to be cut off or something, because.
Got a real screamer. Water's not that deep. <laughs> Evidently it is. Woo, shark. What happened, Scott? Shark got me. Got to make them count, baby. Shark got me. Oh, I was saying it was a bonita. It turned out to be a tuna. Take that. The old popper. I love seeing those fish in the air with that lure in their mouth. Not only did you beat him up on the rod that's and a, reel. That's a beautiful fish on that but popper But you tricked there. him into biting the old fake bait. So it's like two different Glad he got that thing down, didn't he? Oh yeah, he ate the popper, bro. Kapow! That's that new, that's that one with that bubble chamber on it. Get that little hole open in top. The little orca? He choked on it, that's for sure. That? <laughs> Might be a little bloody, but we need to bleed him anyway. Look at that. I'd love to show you the lure, but the problem is, <laughs> hey, hey, you want the, um, the let me there. get the, the hooker for you. Hey, down in there. That's a great one. Do it in his mouth. Yeah. Just want to be fed, Scott. That's the problem with them. Let me slide by you. Oh, we need him. There he is. That's why you can get away with that light leader, bro. Right there in the corner. I mean, absolutely nothing. No leader in the mouth. Right in the corner. Awesome fish. How many jars is that one, buddy? Oh, that's that's a six pack, baby. Six packer? That's a six. All right. <laughs> We spent the, some time on the anchor. The blue runners were so aggressive that, you know, they were just wearing us out. Then, you know, we finally get the tunas to come up, but their, 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 their current was up the anchor line. And it was that one of was the worst. really difficult Yeah, it's one of the situation. most difficult and, and worst conditions you can have. So the tuna fish were busting off of the bow. We had a 20 mile an hour wind straight in our face. You go to the bow, you would cast as hard as you can and it would go 10 feet, right? because you don't have any weight. Your bait has to look just like all those free ones swimming around. You got a baby little tiny hook. You got 25 mm -hmm. uh, fluorocarbon mm -hmm. and a 1-0 hook. And you got no weight to get a cast to throw something. Um, I was trying to use the plug and I was throwing the plug as far as I could because that's got weight to it. But hey, these fish ain't dumb. These got a big eyeball. Mm -hmm. They're not, you know, they'll eat some artificials, but it's a treat if you get them to eat the artificial. Right, it's, it's, the submarine's not the spot for that, but these fish are very well trained. We've, we've, you've done it many other places where it's more of a uh, untrained school of tunas. I was watching the bait and we were getting down there to about the half mark. So basically it was time to make a decision because yes, we were doing okay and just okay. You know, we had a few tunas um, sitting there on the anchor, but um, I felt the way that the conditions were and there was nobody else there that we could pull the anchor and do some drifts. Now, a lot of guys, when I, when I was in the game pretty heavy, guiding down there and rubbing elbows with everybody, um, you didn't drift because um, you took the fish and you pulled them away from the spot. 
Uh, and then these guys would be anchored up and you're dragging fish that they've worked so hard to get there, you're dragging them away. So you don't really want to drift unless everybody's drifting. So if you go down there and you see people anchored up, you need to either anchor up or you need to stay way out on the outsides. And another thing you don't want to do is if you get the fish up, don't keep throwing bait as you drift further and further away because you're pulling the fish away from the wreck. Now, when you decide to drive back up, those fish are out there lost. You, you, you with me? They're, they're out there and they don't know exactly where the wreck is. So you've taken a little piece of the school every time and it, and it makes the fishing tougher. Um, so what we did, I decided that we'll put out a couple flat lines and once we had those out, once we got our drift position right, as soon as we came by, you know, over the top of the wreck, we would throw a scoop and then the tunas would bust and we actually were able to get some bites. Nice little bonehead, beautiful strips. Hey, you want to see more of Into the Blue? Well, you can. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or even come on over to our YouTube channel. See you there. Simrad's Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, has been brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. West Marine for your life on the water. Scales, every degree of water. Mercury Marine, go boldly. And by Ameritrail, Spear One Charters, and Ocean's Edge Resort and Marina. I doubled up for you, Scotty. Nice bonita. Got you a bonita? Got another one on here. Wait, tripled up bonita? I'm getting another one on up. A... Get the hammer down drag up there. He's a jumper. Got the old great barracuda. Sailfish on this one. Luke lighting the drag up. Saw him jump? Yeah, he just jumped. All right, there's a monster cuda over there on that other one. Just put it in reverse slow, and then you can bring that other one in. I knew he'd show himself at some point. <laughs> Got the barracuda. Bonita, sailfish, triple header. That's a charitable grand slam. <laughs> That's Key West's finest. <laughs> <laughs> you like that, don't you? I was ready to see something a little bit better for you. You know, I had talked that place up, and are you making me a sword bait? Yes, sir. You are awesome, dude. I know the weather's gonna break as soon as I leave here tonight. <laughs> I love you, Scotty. But anyhow, I wanted it to be a little bit better, a little more action. So pulling that anchor seemed, you know, tend to work out for us. Um, it was uh, what we needed to do because not only did we get the fish biting again, uh, we also were able to uh, pick up that sailfish that had been swimming around. Yeah. And, and he was upwind again, and you ain't gonna get a bait to him. I, you can't fly a kite upwind. <laughs> you can't it's cast up wind. It's and not you definitely possible. can't drift a bait up there when you got 4,000 blue runners eating everything that goes in the water. Well, and it's what you expect down there, Scott, like, right? All the tunas you want, all the action you want, bent rods, whether it's the blue runner, whether it's the bonita, and then you top it off with a sailfish, and uh, that, that's, the, that's what you come to Key West for, right there. Oh, there he's jumping right there. There he is, tail walking, baby. <laughs> See, we didn't have to go to Alamorada to catch a sailfish. <laughs> Just had to throw 2,000 baits in the water. Everybody knows that. What you got there? I'm coming around to the starboard. Mine's under the boat. I'm not on the wheel either. Good? Yeah, he's going to the props. I got color, though. 
Tuna? Blackfin tuna. That's what we need, bro. <laughs> Gotta be positive, Scotty. It's quite the uh, triple header. Gotta be positive. There's one more. One more for the cooler. Yeah, baby. Feast and famine. Right in the butt. I'll uh, grab a glove and take the wheel for you. You comfortable? Yeah. Always love me a sailfish on a 25-pound leader. So, that's how we go into the blue, baby. Right in the sun. Let me know if I'm getting too close. No, you're good. Oh, he's gone. Oh. That's what happens there, boy, with the tuna fish leader. <laughs> it's just, and plus around his tail, you know yeah. what I mean? It can't hold up to that. No, that was cool though, a little double header. <laughs> Good way to end it, right? Old tail wrap tail fish. Not the easiest. On 25 pounds. Oh, that was dinner and a show right there, buddy. Dinner and a show. It was.